Hello fellow cinephiles, Film Guru here. Today I'm reviewing Guns Akimbo. This was directed by Jason Lee Howden and stars Daniel Radcliffe and Samara Weaving. The film really focuses on, on Miles, played by Daniel Radcliffe. A young guy who's stuck in a dead-end job and, and he's still in love with his ex-girlfriend, Nova. He spends most of his time behind a computer screen, trolling people and attacking people with his keyboard. Unbeknownst to him, a gang called Schism is r running a deadly competition within the city in which complete strangers fight the to the death for the entertainment of an online audience of millions. After one particular comment about a game, he's ultimately set upon by this game, who ultimately knock him unconscious and when he awakens he has guns bolted to his hand. He finds himself caught up in the game and forced to fight in a battle to the death, where he ultimately has to try and kill Nyx, played by Samara Weaving, the most entertaining and famous sort of person playing this particular game that the cops are after. But when his ex-girlfriend Nova is kidnapped, he ultimately has to finally stop running and overcome his fears to fight for the girl he loves. I liked this film. It was fun and over the top and entertaining. And I was enthralled from the beginning, which I really liked. Director Jason Lee Howden. I haven't seen a lot of his films. This is only his second feature film as director. He comes from visual effects. He's worked on Avengers and War for the Planet of the Apes and a variety of other things. And his first foray into writing directing was a film that he did previous to this called Deathgasm. And he has a unique style and interesting storytelling. He, he likes particular stories that are done in a particular way. And in a lot of ways, his film feels like a comic book film. It feels like it's, it's like a messed up, more messed up version than Nerve with a splash of upgrading game are thrown in for good measure. It's crazy, over the top, it's a wild ride, there's a lot of bizarre things that happen, there's a lot of humour in this film, there's a lot of things that are quite surprising and well done. And I just got swept up in the film, I thought it was really entertaining. I really like the introduction to the world and what we get to see. I like when we see the, the world through the computer screen, it's like a video game, and even when even when Nyx and these other strangers are going against each other, it really feels like a video game, and it feels a lot like what they were doing with Gamer that Gerard Butler was in a few years ago, which I really like. It sort of thrusts you into it. The film was ultimately all shot in Auckland, New Zealand, and, and was made with New Zealand money, but you can't really tell. It feels like, you can tell that it's not America, but you can't really tell it's New Zealand. It sort of feels like it could be in Australia, in Sydney or Brisbane or any big city like that, because it sort of feels like that. But I like what he's, the director's able to accomplish here with a small amount of money and quite interesting visual effects. I think all the acting is solid. I think Daniel Radcliffe is really great as Miles, this sort of down his luck sort of character that ultimately has to become the hero in the end, due to circumstances, not anything else. He's an actor I've really started to like. Ever since he broke away from the Harry Potter franchise, he's, he's done a variety of different roles, never doing the same thing twice. He's appeared in really interesting and unique films such as Horns and a variety of others. Not every film he does is great, but I really like the fact he's out there trying. He's doing something different. He's really trying to pave his own way as, a, as an actor, and I, I like that. It's refreshing in many ways. And I think he's solid here, especially when he gets the guns bolted to his hands and his reaction to that and how he's trying to do mundane things and can't do them because he has these guns on his hand. And there's a really funny moment where he's trying to go to the toilet, which has a really great one-liner one as well. But it's just sort of how he manoeuvres around that and how he goes about things with these guns bolted to his hands. I think the villain's quite solid, Richter, played by Ned DeHay who I really didn't know who he was until I looked him up and ultimately he played one of the characters in Nicolas Cage film, Mandy, which I, I didn't really realise. And he's sort of interesting, sort of crazy over the top. He sort of feels like a, a comic book villain in many ways, but he's also grounded and he feels a lot like a character from Mad Max, really. That's what, sort of what the, the feeling I got from him on, on screen. But really, the whole film rests upon the shoulders of Samara Weaving, an actress I'm really starting to like. I haven't seen her a lot of things. It was really this year's Ready or Not that I thought she was fantastic in. And she has this real presence on the screen. And I want to see much more of her. Here she is phenomenal. Mesmerizing, she's a revelation as Nyx. This crazy punk, like murdering sort of psycho character that has problems, but she's very skilled and she doesn't take any prisoners and she's just captivating to watch. You're sort of scared by her, but you're intrigued by her at the same time, which is a very interesting feat for any actress to convey. She's dressed as sort of punkish. She has tattoos. She has these silver metal fangs. And she's just crazy and does a fantastic job. And I just was blown away by her. 
The whole reason to watch this movie is just for her and her performance. I think she gives Margot Robbie and Harley Quinn a run for their money with this film and this character. She's more crazy than Harley Quinn, more raw, more, more aggressive, more violent. And I really love that about her character and the performance that Samara Weaving gives. She's an actress on the rise and one to watch out for. And she's definitely worth checking out in this film because she's absolutely fantastic. This film is pretty full on and there's a lot of violence and a lot of craziness and over the top. And there's some really great humor in it, especially a lot of great lines delivered by Samara Weaving's character, Nix, that just sort of make you laugh, but also make you question why you're laughing at particular things because they're kind of full on. But for me, it wasn't as full on as I expected. It sort of felt a little bit like um, what they did with Crank with Jason Statham and, and he sort of has to keep his heart rate above a particular thing and it's called crazy and over the top. It sort of felt like that. But I really felt this film could have pushed it a bit more. It could have been a bit more like Mandy, not in disturbing craziness of things, but I just felt they could have pushed the ante a bit more. This film really could have come, become a cult classic, but it just didn't push boundaries as much. It didn't have the adrenaline that move as quickly as it really could have. There are chaotic moments in it and the use of camera does tumble and go with the, the actor and that really add to it, but it just didn't push it as far as I expected it to or as far as I think it could have pushed it. I don't think all the humor worked either. It didn't quite hit the way they expected or really wanted it to. It just didn't have the oomph that I really wanted from this film. Even though I enjoyed it, it was entertaining and fun, it didn't elevate itself to where I think it should have been. Also, some of the choices with the characters, I don't know if I overly liked. And I don't know if I loved the ending either, but I was still entertained and had a lot of fun with this film. Final thoughts. Really, the essence, it's about one guy's journey who sort of lives his life through a computer screen and his phone. And there's even a line in the film where he talks about he can't remember the last time he, he walked out of his apartment. His head stuck in a screen. And that's sort of, sort of what it shows, like that... He sort of lives this confined and simple life. He's scared of things. He hides behind these computer screens and he doesn't really live life. And this journey he goes on this film forces him to live life, forces him to make decisions and get involved in things and really see what he's made of and push himself above and beyond what he thinks he's capable of. So it's really a, a sort of a great arc for a character to start as a quiet, timid, scared little man into sort of becoming a hero that he doesn't expect and doing things he would never do usually, which I really loved. I'm gonna give Guns Akimbo three and a half out of five. Like I said, it was entertaining fun, had a good experience with it, but it just didn't get to where I expected it to get. But the film was absolutely worth everything just to see Samara Weaving play as such a unique and interesting character that she made her own. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit subscribe down the bottom. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.